So this constitution was realized, especially when there was a need. First of all, not only need, our need, past individual needs is there. We, we are looking at salaries, we are looking at better working conditions, but also there is a national need. So we came together because there was a national need and then there was members' needs, which we felt was not being looked at well in other umbrellas or under other umbrellas. So the union members countrywide, there was something that triggered it. We didn't know ourselves. There was a force that was triggering the formation of this union. And it just needed leadership and a catalyst to bring the people together. So nationally, there was, there is a need for us being teachers to bring, to, to put our head together and form an organization because we play a very big role in advancement of technology. Uh, as you see, the president has been re-echoing it many times about the need to advance science, the need to promote science in the country. And for us being teachers, we play the primary role because we are the one who mentor these scientists. Without us, we don't have them. We are the mother of them all. So, we, the principle and the laws applied in the concepts of natural science are well explained theoretically and practically. Advanced from one level to another by science. I want to take you through the lawmaking, uh, what? The lawmaking procedure. But we all should know that the laws are drafted by the, the, the ministry or the, 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 what? The, the labor officers. And when they draft, they consult the different stakeholders. In this case, we have the labor unions, okay, and other users of the law. For example, if we are going to draft, if we are going to draft the employment amendment bill, we want to, we are amending the law, we are amending the employment act. It's us who, who, who do the the preliminary drafting. Then we send to Solicitor General, where there is the first parliamentary council, who draft. And after drafting, that's when they we do the consultations. And once we are done consulting everyone and everyone seems content, that's when it's sent to Parliament. And then they discuss the law, and then they send it to the President for assentment, which also takes a bit of time. And there is a formulation review and dissemination of laws, policies, strategies, and state standards. That one I've talked about it. And then we also undertake inspections and enforce the labor laws and standards. So a labor officer, either at the ministry or at the district, is mandated to do inspections, okay? Workplace inspections. I just walk into this hotel and I ask that I want to look at the, where the workers probably sleep or where the workers work from. Then I talk to the workers, I inspect the workplace and ensure that everything is in place. If it is not, I talk to them that's the first thing that we do. We talk to them, we say you need to change here and there. And where and I do a follow-up inspection. If they've not changed, I can even close the workplace. Now that is the labor inspections. Then we also undertake assessment and computation of workers' compensation. We have, um, in our presentation, we have something that we're going to see about workers' compensation, okay? If, well, let me give an example of a science teacher in a school, okay? If the science teacher is working in a school, and probably this is a lab okay, teacher, and they're in the lab, laboratory and something happens to them, first of all, they're supposed to receive medical aid. Thereafter, they're supposed to be treated thoroughly until they are okay. And where they have um, gotten probably a, a permanent incapacity, where they're not going to be able to work again, they're supposed to be compensated, okay? There's one thing you need to understand. The constitution is a governing law, yes, of a given organization. But it is normally not detailed. There are many things which may not be there, especially administrative things. That's why uh, it provides for the making and formulating of policies 
that can now guide the administra administration. Last year, we were able to formulate and generate one policy relating to welfare. Because the constitution, when you check um, the constitution, it gives a general policy on finances. The union is supposed to get finances. It indicates where the finances are supposed to come from. Are you getting me? Then it also indicates how the finances are supposed to be util utilized. But it gives general blocks. Do this, pay wages, pay salaries. Uh, you see that? And other administrative expenses. But it has not told you that pay the secretary this amount. Now that amount has to come from a policy. Which now we had to task the, the welfare and disputes committee and uh, honorable Wepkuru. If that was not there, it means we would still be stuck. And there are many other policies that we are going to develop. To develop. So, today I want to, 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 to dwell on the internal management and administration. Because there are many gaps we have. We sent the regional leadership to the region. But even the regional leadership doesn't know what they are supposed to do. First of all, as the region executive committee and as the regional council, we have not guided them yet. I don't know whether somebody is speaking to me. Yes. yes. So, but the work they are supposed to do uh, may not be in the constitution. The constitution will tell you the role of uh, a regional executive committee or the role of a, a, a regional, exec, uh, regional council. Are you getting me? That's the constitution. But it has not told you how the regional chairperson is supposed to run business at the region. It has not told you how he supposed him, of course, is not working alone. He has the close people, the treasurer and the secretary. How he's supposed to even utilize the finances when they come.